level and welcome to Gossip Railwax Main Sims and today we'll be doing my very first Sonic Models locomotive review. This one being their very first tank engine, the GWR5600 class tank engine. It looks very nice and it is fairly hefty, but uh, let's get all the boring stuff out of the way first. Which is the product code, which is, let's make sure it's all in focus. Can't read it on the on screen because it's a bit small, but uh, it is S2101 01A. Uh, just saying N, just so let it know it is N gauge. So class 5600, 062 tank engine in the BR, lined green with late crest, and the running number of 5643, and also the uh, product code and again uh, underneath the uh, barcode. And uh, that's pretty much it for the box. It tells everything else is generic. So I'm popping that there. Inside the box, you do get uh, four things, not uh, one of them being the loco. Uh, you get a small detail pack, which has two sets of uh, fake couplings, one of them with the uh, with a free link coupling and one and basically one pair with free link and one pair without free link. Uh, and also this little thing, which I've not quite identified. It's a little black thing. It looks like a toolbox, so you might be able to pop that somewhere. However, I don't quite recognize where that's meant to go. Haven't spotted it yet, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure it's meant to be somewhere. So I will just uh, pop that aside anyway. I don't fit at detail pack stuff anyway. Uh, one bit of paper which tells you about where the uh, DCC pin one location is, which would be the very most lower one over here. Uh, it's helpful to you know, make sure you do know which way uh, the DCC code is meant to fit around. So that's useful to know. I'll pop that up there as well. And then we have the final bit of paper. It's on one side. It tells you all the instructions, basically. Uh, running in, minimum radius, fitting DCC uh, chip, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and also where the screw is located and lubrication. On the other side, it has a very nice exploded diagram and also the warranty right at the bottom. Uh, I'm sure it's meant to have just seeing if it uh, has anything about the uh, that unknown detail thing, but uh, I can't quite see it unless I'm being a bit blind and I just haven't noticed. So do have a double check with that if you do want to fit it. Uh, let's see, check on how heavy it is because it is a very hefty loco for how small it is. It is 46.5 grams, which is nearly double a Mark 1 coach, so it's very nice. Anyway, DCC fitting. Uh, basically, you remove the screw at the back here. You can remove these uh, rear tiny uh, trucks, and then you just uh, basically lift it up. It's on a uh, hinge system, so uh, very useful and doesn't seem all that difficult to do, really. Uh, I won't be doing it because uh, it'll be here all day, really. Um, <laughs> I did have a go at uh, removing the uh, pony truck, but it's a little bit fiddly trying to pull this out, but uh, that's me trying to be careful. Anyway, on to the details. Uh, first of all, it's very nicely detailed. It has got a lot of rifting, which you can feel with your fingers if you just rub your fingers over it. A bit strange to say, but uh, it does feel nice. Uh, it does have... Fun, no, was it uh, name couplings either end? So that's always a good thing to have. Uh, has got all wheel pickup, so that's uh, the six drive wheels and also the trailer, uh, the pony truck as well. Uh, it's a very interesting system which they've done. It's, technically, this is a split strategy, but uh, it, the pony truck does have two copper contacts, which so basically touch either side. So. Very nice to have all wheel pickup on absolutely every single wheel. Uh, as I said, detail is quite nice. Uh, no traction tires, so all that weight is all you'll be getting for traction. Uh, as I said, the tampo printing is clear and legible and very neatly done on the lining. A little red spot for a uh, root. I think that's root indication. Just to let you know how. Uh, that's if I'll get it right that for GWI, that's uh, to let you know its root availability. Uh, the number plate on the back here, and also on the front. Uh, shed number. 
have noticed one thing is that uh, the green that does seem darker than the usual uh, balls of green for uh, BR locos. Other than that, it's very nice and quite neat. Uh, does have glazing on all the windows, however mine was second hand and it is missing a bit of glazing on this window over here. Not sure if it's meant to be like that, however it is one thing which I have noticed, but like I said, mine's second hand and uh, that might be the reason why it was a bit cheaper. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. The handrails seem quite solid, which is very nice to see uh, considering uh, the Dapol handrails are very flimsy, so uh, yeah, at least Sonic can get them quite firm. So that's not, you can, I don't want to say roughly handle, but you can at least firmly hold them. And they do feel like metal, so that's nice. Uh, cab detail, there's a little bit of detail, but uh, basically there's a um, little, uh, I think that's the brake. Uh, spindle thing there so uh, yeah that's slightly represented and also a little thing over on the side but since that's where the decoder lives there's not going to be too much but at least there's something uh, the brass work well I don't think it's actually metal but it does look very nice it might be metal for that one that it looks like plastic yeah that is plastic but that does feel quite metally so uh, yeah, very happy with that. Under frame details, it's a bit sparse because it's uh, well, it's the un it's end gate is not really going to be seen underneath here. I'll say that's made in China, so that's one thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's got a fair amount of detail everywhere, and uh, you'll be getting a better look at it uh, in the close up view. So well, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling on, and uh, yeah, show you on the turntable. And then we can get to see how well it pulls on my on my layout. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. The GWR5600 class is a class of 062 tank steam locomotive built between 1924 and 1928. They were designed by Charles Collett for the Great Western Railway and were introduced into traffic in 1924. When the GWR took over the Welsh Valley Lines, they discovered that the Welsh locomotive crews liked their 062 tank locomotives. Rather than a new design, the 5600 class was a swindonised version of the Rimley Railway M class and R class locomotives. The 5600 class was specifically designed for work in South Wales, replacing the elderly, worn out locomotives that had been inherited in 1923. When the smaller railway companies were forcibly merged into the GWR at grouping. Contrary to this trend, the Rimney Railway's more modern 062s were in generally good order and had proven successful. Thus, they became the blueprint for the 5600 class. A fall in the South Wales coal trade in the 1930s saw many of the class reallocated to other parts of the system. Due to the stability of the design, Many drivers would typically operate the 5600 class down the West Wales Valleys in reverse, with bunker first. The placement of the trailing wheels helped the engine enter the curves better than if it operated in any other direction. Typically, during operation, when pulling a heavy load, the tanks were operated bunker first, and then smoke box first on the return trips up the valleys. All 200 of the 5600 locomotives passed into British Railways ownership at nationalisation in 1948, and all remained in service until 1962, at which time they were drawn from service quite rapidly, with the onset of diesel traction on the BR gaining momentum. All had been retired by 1965. Several ended up in the Warham Brothers scrapyard in Barry, South Wales, with eight of the nine Preserved engines safe from Barry. Right, here we are with my 5600 class now on the layout. Uh, I have got my usual 81 Mark 1 coaters just to test out the pulling power. But uh, yeah, first of all, we'll be testing out the slow speed and the general running of the loco first. Uh, also, to mention this is under DC, so its, uh, it's running, running qualities may differ 
under DCC. So let me just give it a little bit of power. That's not too bad. I'm seeing a little bit uncomfortable at the slow speed. Let me test it in reverse. I say that's probably about average. So it doesn't quite like the slowest of speeds, but uh, let's just give it a comfortable slow speed. Let's get a bit of a track there. As always, I probably need to clean it. I'll probably give it a bit more power. Plus, we don't want to be waiting all day long for it to come around. Coming out just about now, there we go. Let's not worry about the uh, radius of the curve, considering that it can go around radius 1, and this is actually above radius 1 from in the curve. That seems quite nice. Hmm. That doesn't seem, seem too bad. Uh, let me just pop that back in the forward. Yes, that is forward. Um, <laughs> right, let's now test. It's pulling power, just making sure I get it on nicely. Let me just test that. Yes, that is. Right. Now this is eight Mark 1 coaches. Each one of these weighs 25 grams roughly. And that's just under, well actually just above half the weight of the 5600. So two of these is just over one of these. So this is a bit over five times its own weight, which it'll be pulling now. So let us just see how well it couples. It's not too bad. It actually seems quite a fairly good connection. Oh, quick look. Let's have a quick look. You probably can't see all that well, but uh, that is actually a good connection. So let's see how well it pulls five times its own weight. Now the straight, that seems quite happy. So no tracks and tyres. Very slight incline. Slowing down a bit, but that's just maybe the track. Oh, it's struggling there. Give it a bit more power. There we go, it's time to go. Yeah, five times the same weight is a Probably a bit too much unless it gets a good run up. Let's see it go around one more time. Now that it has got a run up. So, a bit more of a run up. There we go. And it's slowing down, slowing down a bit. They're struggling there, but it can just about do five times its own weight. And then down here, it's all fine. There we go. So that wasn't too bad. Um, probably take off one or two coaches and it'll be perfectly fine but uh, typically this wouldn't be pulling coaches it'll be pulling uh, coal and well wagons full of coal anyway but yeah that's, that wasn't too bad really on straight flat and level that's sorry that's annoying me um, <laughs> but uh, yeah on the flat and level eight is perfectly fine on, on a slight incline uh, Maybe seven, maybe six, uh, well, 
Maybe seven you'll be able to get away with. Any then any more inclined, I'd start considering lowering it down to probably six or five. But it's not too bad really. And uh, wagons do weigh a lot less than the coats. So, uh, and if you know smart about how you're loading up the coal, they uh, no, it'd still probably be able to put a fairly decent length of co no, coal train. So, yeah, it's not too bad. Now, about the price. Uh, like I said, my whole one's second hand, so I did get mine for about £90. But uh, the typical price of this is uh, 100 and I think it's 110 is probably around a rough price, which you'll probably get it for, for decently large tankings, and it's not too bad. Uh, actually, I think the Terry, uh, not the Terry, the, um, I oh know Terry is not that expensive. The uh, Jinti, Jinti, which is a uh, 060, uh, equally heavy uh, little locomotive, uh, probably, that's probably the next best equivalent. It's probably about 110 as well, so that's, that's probably about a fair price, really. And, uh, yeah. Very impressed with it. And so for the first steam engine to come from Sonic Models, I do know that they have got uh, some other one. I think they've got another one coming in, the, uh, coming along. The uh, what was it? I think the J50 is a Sonic Models. So I do have to double check. Probably is, but uh, yeah, very impressed with this. But uh, do let me know what you lot think in the comments. Uh, do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, or do you think it's probably a bit overpriced for what it's worth? Do you know that some people have had issues with some of these in the past, but to be fair, people do have issues with some uh, no, other locos which have been for, perfectly fine for me, but uh, it just depends on which, really which one, no, quality, quality con uh, control. But anyway, I'm going to send this off in its way, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you do enjoy it, feel free to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if not, well, I hope you enjoy your day anyway. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all again next time. So uh, yeah, take care now. And uh, I'm just going to send it off in its way. There we go. May struggle a bit around the corner, but never mind. Anyway, see you again next time. Bye-bye now.